Hi, my name is Gorgon23. Do you like video games? Cause I sure do. What do you mean, no? Actually, not. <sighs> Get lost. Drop dead, you imbecile. You've always belonged there. Anyway, to the people who are still here, what did you guys start off with? Plenty might say they grew up with old Nintendo or Sega consoles. Perhaps Atari, if you've been on this planet for a long time, or... It's pretty wild to think that we've come this far technologically in only a century. That was a joke, of course. Of course we've departed as far as we come from this dinosaur-like, archaic mess of a video game. You might have also grown up with computer games, the original Doom, Toontown, and a ton of games that I didn't bother bringing up. There's likely a genre, a rabbit hole, of what many would consider the most obscure part of computer gaming. Have you ever heard of Big Fish Games? Probably not. A company founded in 2002 in Seattle publishing and distributing casual games. I've also gotten into a lawsuit about illegal gambling. I doubt you're responsible you have to be to literally just spend every ounce of your free time to just gamble away all your cold, hard-earned cash. I mean. Come on, this is the stupidest thing I think I've ever... Never again! Website basically lists developers of these games, publish these titles in exchange for an unspecified sum of money and some exposure. At least, I think that's how it works. Ranging from various genres including puzzle, strategy, family, and the genres I was most into when I was a kid, Match 3 and Marble Popper. I must have had a mental illness before I even knew what one was. I absolutely ate these up. Dozens of dollars were spent on these kinds of games alone. And while I had many good times with these games, they don't resonate with me anymore. I've developed higher tastes and standards for gaming. Then, there was a time when it wasn't me that discovered it. A game of a genre I have never tried before. It was an adventure game. Which at a glance seems like a very broad term, but a lot of them seem to focus on the whole puzzle-solving, hidden object style of gameplay. Most of the adventure games that I'm thinking of are actually on an old Macintosh computer, which it died about two years ago, because my parents never gave it a software update. But one had stood out to me. Looking back, I wanted this to be the game. The one to pull traditions right out of the water. Being different from everything else, it would be the perfect game. WANDERING WILLOWS! I think it's interesting to note that this game did just come out on Big Fish. It came out on Amazon, the game has blah blah blah, etc, etc, etc. And at one point, it was even up on Steam for a $15 price tag. Whereas on Amazon, and probably everywhere else, it was only $5. Yeah. However, the small community that actually still cared about the game that's actually up on Steam right now, started talking about and complaining that the original game was no longer up on Steam, which is true. The game is no longer available on Steam. And I was going to go through the painful process of just buying the game on Steam instead of just getting it from an Amazon account, but, but what was even the point in that? Guess I gotta go get my parents' Amazon sign-in info, that won't be hard. We're in. Guess I should give a bit of a background about what this game actually is. Wandering Wells is an adventure game for PC and Mac developed by PlayFirst in 2009. Their video game track record is rather impressive, but many of their games don't even appear to have, if barely, any info on them, besides them being listed. Same goes for Wandering Willows, at least according to Wikipedia. Aside from basic info, there isn't really much to say. We just have to pick it up and start playing it, and picking it up and playing it, I did. <laughs> Time to make our avatar. As always, I want my character to look the dumbest while also unintentionally offending many parts of the human race, and done. Now right away, I run into my first problem with the game. No, it's not because of the fact that new Super Mario Bros. Wii looks miles better than whatever this sad loaf of bread is supposed to be, but it's the fact that the in-game cutscenes don't actually work for me for some reason. And I have no idea how to fix it, so our only solution is to go on YouTube and watch the cutscenes. Shout out to Vimmer Place for, uh, the, uh, the, for the footage you're about to see. So you made the fatal mistake of whipping out a hot air balloon and floating around. It's never explained where you were meant to go, and also, it's storming, and you're above the ocean. Smart! Yes, yes, I know, in this scenario, the Doomcoff could have probably just checked the weather app and decided to push the whole hot air balloon event to, like, another day, but I don't care. I don't feel bad for this character yet because the game just started. And then all of a sudden, just some random not very insignificant seagull then crashes right through the balloon itself causing you to fall to your doom. This just doesn't make sense to me. Like, is this a radioactive seagull we're talking about? Is it just equipped with like a razor sharp beak or something? Guess that's what the devs went with because they didn't want us to crash by natural means like getting struck by lightning, crashing to the side of a mountain. 
No, the whole seagull thing makes way more sense. As you're careening downward helplessly, all seems lost. But then, the clouds clear up, the sun comes out, and it's revealed that you're crash lighting in some strange island in nowhere land. This island is also inhabited by Torzils. That is the actual name for them, I wish I was joking. This isn't the first time you're gonna see a creature that just looks out of place entirely, but maybe this game is a fantasy setting, so uh, we'll roll with it. So you make it to this poor looking village that apparently has all the essentials, otherwise these people wouldn't be alive, and the first one you speak to, Debbie Katz, explains how every inhabitant on this island crash landed in different ways. This island has a strange way of drawing people in. Guys, I think the island is drugging them into making them not want to leave. Wow! I got an achievement for walking up to someone, and I even got free money! Imagine if that happened in real life. Where's my money? Where the frick is my money? Sorry if I scared you. You can, yeah, you can, you can leave. So Art Gunderson is struggling to get his garden working. Probably because he didn't try. I could just walk up to it and start using it just like that. Or maybe I'm kind of like God, and these NPCs are just powerless, and all they can do is walk around and talk occasionally? Whatever. This thing that's following me around also needs nourishment. You bring it nourishment by opening your inventory, and then clicking and dragging whatever food you want to bring him to also ensure his energy meter doesn't fully deplete. And if it gets too low, then he'll suck at everything. What do you want? Don't even be rude, I'm just trying to live a normal life and leave this dump. <sighs> What's his problem? Now he needs some wheat and another raspberry. Seems easy enough. That is anything but out of the ordinary, and that is a guarantee. I got what she needs, and then she turns around and asks me to make a tart to show how good a cook I am. So here, I made hot dog. I think it turned out pretty good. As you can see, I clearly did not boil this, and if you actually look, you can see like a very subtle grill mark there. You can't really see it, but it's certainly there. It, it adds a lot, a lot of character to the, to the hot dog. But the subtlety is what makes it so great. I don't like it. If you couldn't gather, the game introduces the fact that you can gather recipes, gather the ingredients for said recipes, and make stuff. I think. And if you also can gather, your pet is basically a slave in this game. All you'll be doing is walking around and picking up whatever your pet digs up or gets from a tree for probably until you run out of serotonin. Back when I used to play this game, I actually played it on a very old, crusty looking laptop, which I don't have anymore, but I do have video of it as you can see on screen. It was pretty bad. I used to actually not mind the extremely grindy aspect of this game. Even up to the point where I would get the 100,000 Willoughby's achievement by literally selling all my belongings, including my clothes. Yes, I was probably naked at one point, but I was rich. I didn't care. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, Willoughby's are like the in-game currency, so I figured I'd just tell that now. Making your pet climb the same few trees over and over again not only brings you whatever comes out of it, but also has the benefit of leveling up your pet so that it can climb higher trees. The same thing applies to digging and... Charming? Guess we'll find out what that means later. Whoa! Silas Appleby? Is that... Is that the, the Applebee's guy? Now nah, he's just some unimportant newspaper guy. Well, actually, I take it back. But it's only one out of nine parts of our b balloon. Okay, yeah, we're, we're gonna... We're gonna be here all night. Also, it was today that I remembered that you can also dig up recipes. Blackberry juice? Sounds like a European thing. Ah, great! Wild animals to fight! Are things about to finally get interesting around here? Will this be a true testament to how far gaming has peaked? Ah! Well, that would explain the charm level. Okay, anyway, Silas wants some wool, blah 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 blah, I don't care. After doing some more grinding, it became rather apparent to me just how odd it looks seeing an animal poop out quartz. I'm not gonna get used to this, I swear. You are perfect to me, I wouldn't trade you for anything in the world!
<laughs> I'm gonna make good money off of this. This is Jeremy Jack. I didn't like him even when I was nine years old. He was banned from using fireworks and torturing insects, apparently. His tampering with Mother Nature made it so that we could get part of the balloon down from the bridge and complete two out of the nine parts of our progress. Riveting. Also, while this was happening, he had a bloody nose, so we gave him a long sleeve shirt to wipe it with. It's funny because it's red and you can't tell if you bled on it or not. Then he asks you for some bread, tells you that he's allergic to wheat, and asks for some grape juice. There's a reason I go and spend about five minutes collecting things and really questioning if I'm enjoying my experience with this game. Do you see me having fun? Also, I'm not a culinary expert, but I'm pretty sure you don't just get onion bread by shoving raw onion into already freshly baked bread. Here's another thing that bothers me about this game. Why did they not call this a fursuit? I mean, that's basically what it is, Fuzzle. It just rhymes with another game that I thought would remain in the back of my mind for over a decade at this point. <laughs> I mean, now we know where this guy's fetish is, right? <laughs> I don't think anybody cares. There's an entire sequence of tasks where you give Fuzzle Apparel to most of the NPCs in this town, and I genuinely don't care. I just think it's a bit weird. Stop pooping sunflower seed! Also, I just remembered that you can charm the animals throughout the environment and possibly get eggs out of them. You can then incubate those eggs and be able to have a fully grown adult version of that animal you just charmed. I guess it doesn't have to grow up. Oh well, we all know this game is about convenience, right? Each pet comes with its own special abilities, such as the Torzels that increase your chances of getting an egg from Charming, the Jojos that make your items sell for more in the market, the Beep Bops that dig up more metals than anything else, and many more. I did not make up any of these names. I figured I would also let that be apparent. So remember when the termites ate away at the wood, holding it part of the balloon? Well, you can access the area across the bridge now that it's not being blocked. I am very excited to continue exploring, and I'm totally not going through withdrawals. <laughs> okay, guys, over the bridge we go. That wasn't fun at all. I'm trying so hard to make this game interesting for myself, but it just isn't working. I do not care if I'm being too harsh. And can someone explain to me what the heck this thing is supposed to be? How can you make this stuff up? It's just a blue kangaroo. A supposed Smurfs villain reject, most likely. After you enter this area and gather some resources for some of the NPCs back in town, you visit Molly Messenger, who is a low-budget teacher, judging by my careful observations. Also, I really hate how she sounds like a porn star. What do you need, dear? I have nothing more to say on that. She asked for some mushrooms, which you can- I got them. I already had them on hand. Now hurry up and tell me to do something. My pulse is getting weak. Now she wants to prove the existence of some sea monster or something, and I need to help her get some parts to make some kind of device to get it to show its face or something. Man, imagine if I had a button that could just summon someone for me. Hey, what's this? What are you supposed to be? I never want to see me again. <gasps> okay, I got the copper now. Work the magic, woman. Mm hmm, yeah, rotating PNG. You know, most of this game is in 2D, but there is a plentiful amount of 3D models that you see throughout the game. I really want to know what happened behind the scenes where this just happened to get into the final product. This looks delightful! Our game will sell billions! And... and now, the thing you never wanted to see. The me sea monster. Hey guys, I'm like the sea monster and stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm like really scary. Boo. <laughs> I think I did a better job because that was ironic. We are meant to watch this and not bat an eye over the one thing that bothers me most about this cutscene. I'm done ranting about it, I guess. Molly then tells you to go and school Jeremy for her because he's not working on his homework. Finally, some enjoyment! It's less thrilling than it sounds. You walk over there, JJ claims he isn't scared of Molly, and then he asks you to help him with his volcano project. Come on, dude, I don't see you do anything around here. The same thing can even be said about everyone in this freaking island. In fact, how did a society like this even function before I came here if they can't climb trees and dig up mushrooms? Explain that, video game! Am I nitpicking? 
Yeah, I'm absolutely nitpicking, but that's just what we do on the show. Admittedly, things start to spice up a tad bit more at this point in the game, where JJ brings up the fact that Professor Meepole is working on a teleportation device and wanted some peace and quiet while he worked on it. Which does explain the force field blocking the way to the next part of the island, which we have yet to access. But, you know, more toil and even more toil after that, that's just how things are. At least JJ's volcano project collapsed while I was getting it there. <laughs> Is this game just not for me? Is this made for babies? Is this, is this a baby game? I don't think it's a baby game. Am I nitpicking? Well, that was easy. After that, you can make collars for your pets, which will enhance various abilities of theirs, like having more energy, better climbing, digging, charming. So maybe I shouldn't be selling those gems for cold hard cash, so I might consider that, I guess. Also, I don't like how JJ is the first to become your actual friend. And after he opens the portal, he's like, Hey dude, I need you to go get me, like, a few things from the store, like a new pair of slippers. I need you to go get me, uh... Uh, a reservation at the new trendy restaurant. Also, I need you to mow the lawn, wash the dishes, scrub the toilet, vacuum the living room, uh, pay the bills. You know what? Shut up! Moral of the story is, if you're not giving someone something every 10 minutes, they are not actually your friend. <laughs> All right, new area, let's do the- I'm not excited. Okay, things are actually starting to not make sense. Let me guess, the robot is gonna lay an egg? Actually, that's somehow even weirder. Basically, we have come here because we need cinnamon and wood. Nothing more, nothing less, but I'm going to ransack this place of every resource that it has, despite the fact that everything reappears at a lightning's pace. Your schedule can't be as busy as mine. Shut up. Okay, is this interesting? I gave Professor Meepole some copper and wool and he go bye-bye! Hey, buddy! You forgot your name tag! Anyway, after you help the guy for a bit, you eventually get the ability to teleport back to the mainland, which may only save a, a minute or two, but it does add up and you can actually save tons of time. For each use, it does require a battery and I am saving up my hard-earned cash for more important things. I promise they're actually kind of important though. Okay, I dug us some teeth and now we have a third of the game complete. That took way longer than it should have, but we're here now. I hope this doesn't take much longer, but it probably will. JJ plus fireworks. I wonder what's gonna ha- Calm down everybody, there's no need to panic. All you gotta do is head into your emergency bunkers and wait out the chaos. Everything will be fine. At least we can progress! The festival was so unimportant that now it just doesn't exist, and nobody in the game seemed to care about it. Debbie, who started hosting it, didn't even bat an eye. All she cares about is her hair that's all frizzy, apparently. Oh yeah, there's also some festival, but it was so irrelevant, I forgot to bring it up. In this new area, you can now obtain things like oranges and oil, and you'll meet Evie and B Messenger, who are the daughters of Molly Messenger. One of them thinks paint is just dirty water, very observant. Later, we bring JJ some materials for yet another rocket, and this time it's to blow up part of this already destroyed plane that Heather and Silas arrived in to obtain a radio. And it turns out that now we're almost halfway through the game. At long last. If you're getting bored watching this video, don't worry. Something pretty big does actually happen very soon. After you apply grease to this bridge at the bottom center part of the island, you'll then have access to the tropics. This is a completely new area with new animals, crops, NPCs, things together, and it's overall quite different from the grasslands. So I guess you could say that I'm looking forward to the same mundaneness, but with a new coat of paint. I have no reason to lie to you. He speaks the truth. Once you get used to the weird animals, I'll have to admit that I do like the designs of some of these creatures. Let me show you an out of context clip from this game. I think you might enjoy it. Also, Meeple creates a new animal and tells me to be careful out there. What, am I gonna contract some rare, uncurable disease or something? Nerd. Anyway, we meet some rich chick who probably wants to leave, then this guy with the most generic sounding Spanish name I've ever heard, Nico Garcia, who asks for something and then I automatically become his friend. 
I literally only did one thing, dude. Don't get too attached. But he asks me what music I'm into and says how he's into 80s metal music. This guy knows what's up. And asks for a guitar and a metal band outfit or whatever. I don't care. Am I supposed to be gathering some kind of personality from these characters? Unless their personality is to leech off the protagonist. All I can assume is that the listed things they like might have something to do with their personality? And even during your delirious dialogue exchanges, there are a few things that you can theoretically pick apart, but then I wonder if some of these aspects are just quirks. I'm not even sure if Heather and Debbie are really that different. Art is kind, a furry, and probably a cranky old man. What do you, what do you want? want? What do you want? What do you want? Silas, who's crankier, is an alcoholic and is usually not in a great mood. JJ is just some brat who tends to be cool, but is the opposite of such. I do not care at all about anyone else. Even some of the descriptions I put out there are, again, quirks. After you gather up everything you know about these characters, they still end up being blander than a glass of water. But even that's just slander because I love water. Please drink. And this game was $15 on Steam at one point. Where did the money go? All right, I got it to the point in the game where I can just teleport to the tropics, which I think is rather forgiving. Also, yeah, there's this spaceship guy that thinks Earth is being invaded by aliens. He's not okay. Uh, Taurus Hill? Just listen, buddy. Just go around, just cross the bridge, and we can be together again. Just go around, you can do this. Taurus Hill, no, don't cross the stream, you can't swim. <laughs> Man really went like Anyway, new area. More labor. Let's do this. Lemons, chocolate, iron, whatever this thing is. This thing literally looks ill. And with the name they really went Cha Cha real smooth. Now we meet the Blueberry Sisters. That's their last name, I'm just saying. They are city girls, and one of them wants to go more green. So logically, I'm asked to go grab some fruits and see how many pesticides it contains. You know, even though I happen to grow them fresh from the garden in mere seconds where you don't have this thing called real life and it doesn't take months for a carrot to fully mature. And there doesn't even seem to be a need for pesticides anyway, so why should there be a concern? Also, man, did this line age well. <laughs> Oh no, there's two of you! And now I have one as a pet. I'm not sure how to feel about this. Also, who remembers the sea monster? I'm glad nobody spoke out about it because I don't care either. Molly is at it again and she asks for a boombox and an amplifier to get the creature to show itself. I condone every form of harassment. What the heck was that? It's like they didn't even try. I don't have to reiterate why that looks terrible, so let's just move on. Molly goes on to say that it's not a monster because it looks cute. And then Molly goes on to keep it a secret between us that Professor Meeple doesn't get any bright ideas, which is understandable, but I still don't care. Speaking of which, he's literally the first person you become best friends with. Professor Meepole. I live a very sad life. At least he lets us access another new area in the grassland, at the very least, however. Then we meet Mr. Z, which Whitaker, the space guy, wouldn't shut up about. It. Mr. Z is apparently an alien? If Scatman John was an alien but looks nothing like him? He makes another path for us because he has supernatural powers and he really likes chocolate for some reason. This is probably the only character where I found the dialogue at least interesting to read. I mean, of course it would, this isn't a stupid human we're talking about, and Fergie just sounds like a disease. You grubby earth people all want something, don't you? Well, that's hypocritical of you to say because you just asked me to do something for you. <laughs> Listen, with all due respect, I don't need this egg, so kindly shove it back into your euthria, okay? At this point in the game, we have to bring some materials to Mr. C so that we can get a... material for our balloon. You know, I got so caught up in like bringing some costume to some rich entitled woman in the tropics and helping with JJ's pink eye that I almost forgot why we're here. I wonder if I'm enjoying myself. I'm not. And now we still aren't finished with the game. <laughs> Whitaker then moves the crash satellite and we can go to a place that has coconuts or something. I just want to be done. It also has coffee beans, bananas, and... 
Yes! Yes! So much power! So much energy flowing through me! I'll be rich above all else! <laughs> Anyway, I got more stuff for Whitaker, and he fixed the satellite, uh, thingy. Time to vaporize that green know-it-all? Why would you kill off the only interesting character in this game? You're a monster, Mr. Whitaker! Uh. Guess the targeting was a bit off. Ha! Suck on that! The best characters never die. Sometimes. Yet another new area is revealed, and it once again has new animals to charm. I am definitely thrilled by this. Also, I like the Issa. Because I'm a cat person, regardless of whether these sound effects were just downloaded off of a free sound effects website, it still feels at home to me, and I like hearing it. Also, do you ever think about what this is supposed to sound like? Because I certainly don't know. Maxine Rose is an archaeologist that, uh, does some stuff I can't really remember. But she helps you get a compass, so that's pretty cool. Also, I apparently went a bit ahead and forgot one of the advancements, so I gotta bring some pirate guy some limeade or something. I don't freaking remember. I think he gives you a telescope, though, so we might want to help him. Also, he uses paint as nail polish. Don't ask me why. At this point, if I'm being honest, I'm actually starting to get kind of invested in this game. Now that I'm hyper fixating on the main story and not doing a bunch of pointless side quests. Which is not a good thing because the game is actually nearing its end. I am about to beat the game and I've only enjoyed it up to this point. What the frick, man? Wow, I never thought I could feel so bad for a pet. He looks so depressed when he's tired like that. Here, eat a baby. I really thought that would work for a second. Let me show you why. You're really stretching your logic a bit, don't you think, game? Yay, I got the telescope! It didn't take that long! At this point in the video making progress of things, it was like 1.30 in the morning, but I was destined to finish the rest of the game before I went to sleep. I had only two things left to do, and I was gonna make sure that they were done So, Scratch that, I went to bed 20 minutes later because my back was killing me and my neck was sore. Those coconuts must have taken a while to ripen- No, bring me four more! Anyway, back to Maxine. Basically, you do a series of fetch questing for her- Not like that was the entire game's concept. And then you wind up giving her a wand thing and a voodoo mask, and she attempts to summon Kababa or something. I can't remember. She was probably gonna get eaten alive or something, so you remove one of the gems, the ritual- ends, the volcano erupts, and now we can progress to the final part of the tropics, and we now need to retrieve a heating element from, I'm assuming it's the actual Kababa's pet. I actually have a fair amount of fond memories of wanting to have this thing as a pet, but I never thought that it was actually possible. This is not just for the sake of wanting to get the achievement that you get from getting all the pets, but more so, I just really wanted to flip my past self off. And I mean, that would be quite the achievement, am I right? I charmed it, it got what I needed, and then I had eight of the nine goals I had to reach. I know I called them different things throughout this video, but I had then just remembered what they were actually called. After that, you say goodbye to everyone on the tropics and the grassland, you whip out your balloon, and you leave them for good. Now there's an ending cutscene, but again, my version of the game somehow doesn't have working cutscenes, so we must watch it on YouTube just like the opening cutscene, and just like the opening cutscene, it is from the same person that provided the footage for the opening cutscene, so thank you. I forget your name, I'll put it in post. Well, there wasn't much of a reason to put this in, but I just want to appreciate how much better the cutscenes were compared to the graphics of the actual game. It has a good blend of colors, a nice watercolor feel to it, and it was just pleasant to look at. You admit that you're going to miss these bland characters, and shortly after, there's no credit sequence. You return to the island anyway, so what was the point of even leaving? And that's pretty much the entire game. But I have one more mission on hand, and that is to get a Kababa's pet. It won't be easy but I'm willing to try as hard as I possibly can. Kababa's pet? More like Kababa Booey. Wait, where'd he go? I swear he's usually here. Mom! It just vanished! Oh well, I guess I have to end this off on a sour note. I'm not even sure if it's possible to get your own Kababa's pet, so I guess I'll have to just wait around until eventually it's debunked by someone that's more knowledgeable in this game than I will ever be. <laughs> There's virtually no info on this game on the internet, so there's really no telling if anyone's ever owned a Kababa's pet of their own. And if you think about it, if you got the medal, but you have every other pet in the game except for Kababa's pet, then it really makes me wonder if it is possible to actually get a Kababa's pet, and it's possible that it's not! At this point in the video, you're probably wondering what my overall thoughts are on the game. 
not as bad as I thought it was going to be coming back to it. I'm going to be honest. It's definitely not all positive in my book, however. The game felt way longer for all it really had to offer. When you base an entire game around fetch questing, you're gonna lose me. Maybe this is a style of game that there's a genuine player base for, and this just happens to be among many of the forgotten. But okay, if I'm just insulting people's tastes, then why can't the characters be interesting and not just have their personality be their traits? I'm just not invested in these characters, and if the gameplay is just gonna be get these things, make these things, and give people things that they like you, then that's a big problem. The cutscene graphics are actually really nice to look at, and some of the 2D objects are actually somewhat rich in detail, but everything else is kinda putrid. The 3D modeling is definitely not the greatest, and to throw in the excuse that the game came out in 2009, let me remind you that games looked rather pretty during this time, even when we were used to games on consoles like the Nintendo Switch, PS5, and Xbox Series X. The soundtrack also never felt like it ever fit in with the actual game, but that's not to say I don't like it, it just sounds sickeningly generic. I actually thought some of the voice actors did a pretty good job. I mean, I like Z and Scrimshaw's voice. The salt air makes my hair all frizzy. What do you think? Here I am once again fishing for good things to say about this game. There just isn't a lot. And this wasn't worth the six something hours to put into the game, and I never want to touch it again. I wonder if the next episode is going to give me plenty of serotonin. <laughs>